Hey everyone, this is Manly Badass Zero, and welcome to Missing, which is a horror game where you go looking for your missing friend, and this will lead you to someone who may or may not be very suspicious. What are you laughing at? I added your Polaroid to my notebook. Uh, I don't look good in that photo, though. Nah, that's part of the appeal. No, look. It's like you're preserved in here, uh, in my notes, forever. Isn't that cool? I guess that's a nice thought. Right? I hope we can look back on this summer and the years to come and reminisce over the good old days. I hope we stay friends forever. Your friend has been missing for over a week now. Well, that didn't last long. The local police weren't getting anywhere with their search. It's a small town, and missing people cases like this are rare and far between. You guess that the lack of progress made in their investigations were due to the fact that they were ill-equipped to handle something like this. Or maybe they were just incompetent. So you decided to take matters into your own hands. You've had your suspicions. In fact, you'd been suspicious of him for a while. It wasn't based on anything concrete. He's well-liked in the community, and seems to be a normal guy. It was just an uncomfortable gut feeling. And so, you find yourself standing outside a small house on the outskirts of the town. You look down into your notebook. The plan was to enter his home under the guise of an official investigation. Yeah, this plan, um... Uh, I'm not sure if it's going to quite work. Yeah, a bunch of scribbles in a notebook and a little drawing is, uh... Well, I suppose it could be a plan. You'd have to be impersonating a detective, which might get you in trouble if discovered. But if all goes well, you'd be able to collect the evidence you need to find out what happened to your friend. Or maybe you were wrong. Maybe he's innocent, and you're just blowing things out of proportion all because of a gut feeling. You look back up at the house. It's a simple one-story building. It looks quite homely. There are plants of our trinkets decorating the patio, and the lawn is neatly kept. You feel a small pang of guilt for intruding on such a peaceful-looking home. But that feeling slowly morphs into the sensation of fear. There's a chill running down your spine as you approach the front door. You stand outside, shifting from one foot to the other. This is it. Should you continue? It's not too late to back out now. Back out. You bit your lips nervously. This was a bad idea. There are so many things that could go wrong. For all you know, he could be completely innocent. You'd be accusing him of a crime he didn't do, and trespassing to his private property, but since this is a game premise, he's most likely guilty. On top of that, you'd definitely get into some legal trouble, that would be true. If you're found impersonating that 40 figure. Head hanging low, you step back from the door. For a moment, your friend's smiling face flashes in your head. You take one last look at the house, and then you leave. Ending one. Coward. Okay, so let's continue. You were nervous, yes. But you were also determined to seek out any clues that may help you find your friend. You quickly smoothed out the creases in your dress, making yourself look presentable. With renewed resolve, you knock on the door. Alright, so we taking bets? Do you think the friend is alive or dead? Because for me right now, it can go either way. There's a small shuffling noise coming from within. One moment. You have really spiky hair going by the silhouette. You hear footsteps approaching. The door creaks open, and a friendly face steps in front of to greet you. You've seen him around town a few times, but his strikingly unusual appearance always seems to surprise you. Can I help you? This sudden question knocks you out of your stupor. Oh, uh, yes. You pull out a fake badge with a fake identity from your pocket. I'm Detective Quinn with the Border Springs Police Department. You're Crow, correct? Crow glances at your hastily made badge. For a moment, you're worried he's caught on to you, but then he gives you an affirmative smile. That's me. I'm just here to ask you a few questions and pertinence onto an ongoing missing persons investigation. Do you mind if I come in? Perfect. Just as you rehearsed. He eyes you for a moment. 
a missing persons investigation. You nod. Your palms were beginning to feel sweaty from all the nerves. He stares at you thoughtfully for a moment. Then he smiles again. I would trust that smile. That's a good smile. Sure thing, detective. Come on in. Crow motions for you to enter, and you eagerly do so. As you step inside, he closes the door behind you. Um... Before you can have any time for yourself to look around the place, you're quickly ushered towards the guest area. Nice hat. Sorry for my appearance, detective. I had just gone home from work, so I haven't gotten to change yet. He motions towards his outfit, the standard uniform issued to the crew members at the local train station. I'll brew up some tea for you. Do you have any preferences? One that's not poisoned. No, anything is fine. Think so. All right. I'll be back momentarily. Make yourself comfortable. You take a seat down at the table, eyes trailing after Crow as he leaves the room. This could be a good opportunity to look around. Hmm. Multi-ending game. I'm gonna... wait. You decide to play it safe and wait for a while, while reviewing old notes. You pull out your notebook and pen from inside your pockets and flip through the pages. Ah, there he was. Hmm. Crow. You couldn't find much information on him. You weren't even able to find his last name. Maybe it's just Crow. Like Mario Mario. He has virtually no social media presence, nor any close friends who do. He seems to be the easygoing type, but keeps to himself most of the time. You rub out your eyes in frustration, You spent the last week telling him in secret, but that was the extent of what you found. He lived such a painfully normal and boring life that you almost felt bad for the guy. But despite all that, your instincts were telling you that he was dangerous. And that's why you're here now. Your train of thought is broken as you hear the sound of running water going off in the kitchen. Oh no, no, just stay in your seat. We're just gonna keep staying. Unable to muster up the courage to leave your seat. You stay put in your spot, fingers nervously tapping the edge of the table. The whistling of the kettle goes off in the kitchen, and you can hear the clatter of cups and utensils as Crow prepares the tea. After a few more minutes, he returns with a silver tray in hand. He gently sets down a piping hot cup in front of you. Sugar. I'll pass. He sits down across from you. He doesn't touch his tea. So... What did you come to me for? Um... Ask him out? Question him? Wait, what? Are you serious? I don't know, sure. I, uh... Look at the sweater dripping down your face. Crow seems a little uncomfortable at your sudden weird behavior. I came today... To, uh... Ask... Crow raises an eyebrow. Ask you on... A date? There's a long silence between the two of you. Uh-oh. Get out of my house. Yes, sir. Ending four. Not a dating sim. Damn. Shut down. So this time, let's snoop around. Eager to take advantage of his absence, you quickly leave your seat and head towards the hallway. It's a surprisingly long hallway. The place definitely looks smaller from the outside. The lights are all off, save for a yellow glow coming from the last room in the hall. You nervously turn the doorknob of said room and peek inside, for it not be blood in here. Thank God. It's a walk-in closet. Wow, you have a big closet. Rows of clothing are neatly hung in the closet rod. Everything is meticulously arranged by color, blue, white, black. You walk deeper into the wardrobe room. A little surprised that people actually have rooms of this size dedicated to clothing alone. And that's when you notice it. Well, no, nope, nope, there's the blood. Inconspicuously placed on a table full of gloves, a blood-stained pair lay out in the open. Or tomato juice stain, if we want to give doubt. You shake at least step closer to get a better look, reaching out to pick up the piece of evidence you need. 
I came to grab a new pair of gloves. But I didn't expect you to have beat me to it. You nearly jumped out of your skin at the sudden noise. Sheepishly, you turned to face Crow, who was leaning against the doorway. Upon your repositioning, you noticed there was a specific article of clothing you were trying to grab. Ah. Uh, that. He smiles. I was field dressing a rabbit the other day. And don't worry, I've got a license. It was understandable. Many residents of Border Springs participate in the hunting of wild game during this season. I mean, he does live in the woods. But despite that, you still felt chills going down your spine. Now, I am a little uncomfortable with a young lady such as yourself going through my clothes. How about we call it a day here? I do have some matters to attend to. You nod meekly, embarrassed that he caught you at such a bad time, and you are swiftly escorted out of his home. And in two, empty-handed, or glove-handed. I don't know what we expected. It's like, yeah, he's just gonna let you this roam. He's not gonna, like, be suspicious of you or anything. So let's just question him this time rather than ask him out. Even though some people in the comments do like this question. You know who you are. You try to keep up your facade as a detective, asking him questions about his relationships, his personal life, his schedule, and alibi. Of course, you weren't able to pick up on any inconsistencies, and your line of questioning was inefficient and lacked substance. This back and forth goes on for about half an hour, before you decide to finally cut your losses and leave. You rise from your seat, tucking away your notebook and pen back into your pocket. Will that be all, Detective Gwen? You sign, give him a small nod, making your way towards the front door. Crow trails behind you, seeing you out. There's a feeling of defeat from him not having gotten anything worthwhile out of this whole encounter, but you thank him for his time anyway. Glad to have been of help, Detective. You give a half hard nod as you walk across his front lawn. Is this just gonna be like the disappointed ending? It's just gonna be like, eh, tried. If you ever need more assistance with that investigation of yours, do you feel free to come by for tea again sometime? Petunia Flores. Ah? You stumbled mid step. You never told him your real name. You turned back to face him, but he was already gone. Ending 3. Playing Detective. Okay, so last time we said stay in your seat, and which led us to do the whole please date me option. Let's check out the house at a different time. Now that it sounded like he was preoccupied with whatever was going on in the kitchen, you decided to take this time to explore the rest of the house. You quietly leave your seat, scurrying over to a dark hallway. The lights are all off, so you had quite a bit of trouble navigating from room to room. One by one, down the hall, you peeked into each room. A restroom, a storage room, a bedroom, an anime room, and finally a closet. You sigh, rubbing tiredly at your eyes. It was difficult to see anything in these conditions. As you're about to leave the closet, you slip briefly on a rug. Shoot! You quickly move to readjust the displaced floor covering, but notice something peculiar as you do. A trap door. Hidden underneath. You feel your heartbeat quicken. Cautiously, you lift up the heavy door and peer inside. Now will we die? Complete darkness. You take a step down. And then another. These damn floorboards might as well be a marching band. Until you reach the end. By now, your eyes have adjusted to the dim setting. There's a strange smell down here. You cover your mouth to mask the odor, but it permeates through the air regardless. And then, you see it. A wall, strewn with pictures of them. Hmm. Looks like Crow loves someone. Your missing friend. Red ink is scribbled all over every photograph. Proclamations of love towards them, and threats of violence towards anyone else who dared interfere. You back up a little at the side. 
You froze. That wasn't you. It came from behind. Ah, now you've done it. I was gonna let you go, you know. Detective Quinn. Or should I say, Petunia Flores. I thought that humoring you in your little game of detective might satisfy that troublesome sixth sense of yours. But I can't believe you managed to sniff this place out. A shame, really. A shame. Out of all the inconveniences in my way, you are still tolerable, to some extent. He pulls out a needle. There's a murky substance inside. I do hope you don't take this personally. I was going to let you go. Really. Promise. But the circumstances have changed. And well... I can't have you get in the way of my love. Ending 5. Missing. Have you seen this girl? But then where was he? So, that's it for Missing. Uh, that is all five endings. We left off on an extreme cliffhanger. And I went to the, the developers and the artists' TikTok page to kind of figure out what's kind of going on plot-wise. So they made this game literally overnight. It's just a quick thing they put together. And it's a kind of a precursor spin-off to another game they're making, which is, you know, going to feature these characters. I'm not sure who the main character of that game is going to be. It might be the person that's missing here, but it looks like the Crow character is going to be like the antagonist or something like that or at least somewhat important in the story. So that's why it kind of seems like we left off when the uh, the going got good, as you would say. So while it's not officially listed as like a demo or a prologue or something like that, I'm gonna kind of view it as one. So I won't really like comment on like the writing or anything like pacing, anything like that. What we had was fine. And I do like the artist's art. And I like the characters that they're showing so far for this. Is there a lot of Yandere stories out there? Yeah. Do I care? Not really. <laughs> because how I always see it is, it's a bit like... There's a lot of slasher horror movies out there, or things like that. And I never quite get tired of the genre. It's just, can you make it creative, or at least visually entertaining, within that framework? And it never hurts to have a uh, another... What I assume is an evil character with uh, spiral eyes. Anyway, so thank you all for watching Play Missing. I'll see you guys later, and take it easy.